Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of various uh, special effects that you can put on your art, or things like blood and water, which can be really hard and tricky to actually render correctly. But first I need to draw some characters to inflict all these status effects onto. I'm going to be using three characters from the game Honkai Star Rail um, because they are the sponsor of this video and because they're kind of perfect for this challenge and because I want them all to go together on the same composition at the end. I'm doing some little thumbnails just to sort of make sure that all the poses are going to look good together. So uh, first things first, I'm going to draw Blade. I knew for a fact I wanted to use him as my canvas for blood effects. And this is something that I actually struggled with a lot when I was younger, like when I was in my teens and drawing a lot of stuff on DeviantArt, I definitely wanted to be able to draw like, you know, horror art and things that are scary and that kind of thing. Um, I was also really interested in uh, all kinds of anime and manga where there was often a lot of like injury and stuff going on. So it was something I really wanted to learn how to draw properly, but it's surprisingly difficult and I find that like in particular drawing any kind of liquid on your character, especially when you're still learning how to draw and learning how to deal with things like hair and clothes, it can be really 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 tricky um, and not very intuitive, so that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. So. Um, I'm just drawing Blade really quickly. This is sped up times like a million um, because his design is just so intricate and detailed. Um, I wanted to make sure he looked extra scary and I always love doing these redraws of characters in like Genshin Impact or in Honkai. Um, it's just, it's fun for me. <laughs> but let's get into the don'ts of drawing blood. Um, so first I'm going to show you guys what I did initially when I was first learning um, how to draw and do digital art. For some reason I thought that the best thing to do would be to use bright red of course and also to use the like spray tool you know like the airbrush um, and I applied it the same way to things like the face as I did to let's say like the clothes. Now this is definitely not something that you want to do. Um, I also didn't consider things like the trajectory of like blood spatter um, not to be too gruesome, um, but just like with anything, just like with how light falls on certain parts of the face, it's the same for anything else. So I would just like kind of put things wherever or wherever I thought it would look cool um, instead of actually like thinking about it logically. So on the do side, I'm going to show you guys how I would draw a, a bloodied character now. Um, so the first thing I would say is generally it's safer to go with a darker color. Um, this is just kind of a hack uh, to avoid avoid any like super beginner mistakes. I think beginners almost always lean towards too bright and too saturated when it comes to stuff like this. Um, the other biggest thing that I think makes the hugest difference is remembering that this is like a liquid. So I'm going to show it kind of smeared on his cheek um, because a lot of the times that was that's what would really happen. You know, like if you touch your face, if you feel something on it. And so like that can add a lot of like realism to it and make it feel more legitimate. Um, also, if the blood is somewhere else, like not on a smooth surface like skin, um, it's going to change the way that it looks. So uh, as you can see in his teeth, um, because you're, <laughs> you have like saliva in your mouth, uh, it's going to essentially water it down and turn it to more of a pink color. And then it's going to cling more saturatedly to the gaps between your teeth. Um, and this can look really s like scary and legit. Um, also, I recommend using a multiply layer if you're going to be drawing blood on the clothes. Now here is where that's like airbrushy look can actually work better, but you have to make sure that it's not too bright and um, you want to use multiply because uh, blood is not, it's not paint, right? So the color underneath when it comes to clothes and especially if it's soaking into clothes, it's going to darken everything and it's not going to be bright red over top of like a dark navy or black or gray um, jacket like Blade has here. One thing that overall can make it look a lot better in general is just to have different types and different colors of blood on the character, like some of it's dried more than others. Obviously this really depends on like the story that you're trying to tell and like what exactly happened with this character, um, so use your own discretion on that. Uh, one thing that really helps me with the clothes is using like a chalkier brush and it can make it look like um, you're actually seeing the texture of the fabric, which looks extra appealing and interesting, I think. Moving right along, I'm going to be drawing Kafka from Honkai Star Rail. Um, she is a very like 
flirtatious yet um, sort of ominous character and uh, I thought that she would be perfect to show the water effects or like the characters being like wet or like rained on because um, her splash art involves a lot of umbrellas. I'm drawing her with an umbrella and um, I'm going to just use her to kind of show you guys how to draw a character who's been rained on a little bit. Um, now if a character is completely soaked like they were just coming out of a pool, you're going to have to draw them like from the start with that consideration because like if all of their clothes are completely saturated and their hair is completely saturated, um, you should be able to tell before you even get into line art. But if you are drawing a character who's been rained on or something like that or anything you know less extreme than them being fully submerged um, you're going to be able to do this as sort of like an effect after you've done the main drawing and since i'm trying to draw um, a do this not that style video um, i'm going to try to focus on that instead now for me personally water is even harder like showing that the character's been rained on not going too far um and just making it look convincing is surprisingly tough so i'm excited to get into this with you guys um and again as i always say with these do this not that videos um it's just it's just the title you know like obviously you can do whatever you want i'm just trying to help you guys um avoid some mistakes that i have made <laughs> in the past so when i wanted to draw a character who had been rained on or was like a little wet um I would typically like just draw these little U shapes or like drips on them and I would sometimes also make them like blue, like like blue water. I, I'm not really sure why I did this. I don't know how common this is even as a beginner's mistake. It's just something that I did, <laughs> um, but it's kind of embarrassing to look back on now. Um, now if you want to do this more convincingly, um, the first thing I recommend is just not going too overboard with the drips and whatnot. Um, you can be kind of subtle and people will still usually pick up on it and like traditionally if you're like sweaty or has been rained on you're not going to have like a zillion water droplets like falling off of you. It's like it's actually pretty subtle. Um, the number one thing that has helped me with this is actually like again going into a multiply layer and lightly darkening the tips of the hair and like parts like the shoulder or the collar. Um, this just overall makes the characters fabric of their clothes and their hair look wet and you want it to be more intense at the tips of the hair because water sort of you know it's affected by gravity and it soaks down into the tips of your hair anyone who has longer hair and who's been stuck blow drying the hair for a long time knows that the ends are the part that always take forever to actually dry um so the same logic applies here uh so yeah also you can add some like gloss to the hair like make it a little shinier this is another great way to show that something is wet um so you can do that with hair especially because glossy hair already looks good so it'll be aesthetically pleasing and it also makes the effects stronger uh, just like with blood the trick is usually not to go overboard and also just to um, not be too opaque with your effects because when you go too opaque it just looks weird um, so when you use some transparency it usually looks better that's just a great rule of thumb on to our next character and our next effect and here I'm going to be talking about glitch and technical effects because we're dealing with the genius hacker uh, Silver Wolf from Honkai Star Rail. Um, she is so adorable. I love her character design um, and this is going to be a little bit different. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have tried to do some kind of glitch effects and some of your digital drawing programs, if you use those, have some built-in pre-made effects that can work really well for this. Um, but if you want to do it by hand or you have like relatively limited um, ability to do these kinds of effects this might be helpful to you so we're just whipping her up real quick I cannot even tell you <laughs> how much mental focus it took for me to draw this character correctly because she has such a complex design like there's just so much going on um, but I did really enjoy it um, trying to just figure out where all her like buckles and all the little details of like her shorts it just it was like <laughs> it was pretty tough to be honest but um, um, I think she turned out great in the end. Um, glitch effects are really cool and can add a very modern look to your characters and your illustrations, so I definitely recommend trying it out. Um, before you jump straight into automatically using whatever like defaults uh, your program has, I do recommend trying to do it a more like basic way. So first I'll show you the way that I would do it in the past 
just like with the blood and the rain, the first thing you want to avoid is making things too opaque, as usual. This time, instead of relying on multiply layers and making things sort of like fade into it, uh, I actually recommend using more like hard light or soft light or things like that um, because a lot of the time when we're dealing with screens, which is what a lot of these glitches are emulating, we are talking about light and pixels that are emitting light. So uh, we want to go kind of the other direction. Um, so with this one, the first thing I wanted to show you is how to like fake a chromatic aberration. Um, that's basically when you see a little bit of cyan and a little bit of like reddish pink on either side of an image. Um, and this is just a uh, pretty common and pretty cool looking uh, glitch effect that I think a lot of people are really liking these days. Um, there are some programs that do this automatically and they just have that feature, which is very cool. I think Procreate has a chromatic aberration effect, if I remember correctly. Um, and then you'll see I'm doing something very similar to what I did in the don't side, but the difference here is that you're going to be seeing um, this color sort of overlay and it's going to change based on where it is. Now you can just tell right off the bat that this looks cooler, at least in my opinion, um, and I'm using hard light with a little bit of opacity to achieve this effect. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I actually took a like static, a TV static image, um, and I'm just breaking it up over the image as well. Don't be afraid to use these like textures and stuff, especially with things like glitches that are really hard to hand paint. Um, it's just a good technique, it'll speed things up and it will make things look more authentic. So I really hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, thank you so much to Honkai Star Rail for supporting the channel. Um, this game is so exciting. Uh, you guys definitely need to check it out. There's a link in the description and I loved drawing all of these characters. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next one. Huge thank you to my wonderful patrons, including Stan Soup, Liddy Savior, Roro, Birds on a Wire, Emmy Lightning, Rayon, Sporple Matt, Brandon Stark, CB, Lucy Amajiki, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, Raven's Crow, Sasala, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, Kadaria, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Cutie Pie, Ruin Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, Live Live Live.